Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on the comedy of errors and today we get to hear from Adriana in Act 2, Scene 1. It is actually Act 2, it's just he didn't put scenes within the acts, but other people have, so this is Act 2, Scene 1. But first we need to finish off with Act 1, because we only got halfway through it. And what we learned in Act 1 is that the people of Ephesus and the people of Syracuse hate each other and do not get along. And if somebody from one of the towns is found in the other one, they will be put to death, all of their goods confiscated, unless they can pay a thousand marks bail. So this merchant from Syracuse, whose name is Aegean, had come to Ephesus because he's looking for his long lost son and wife and also kind of the son's servant boy because all these identical twins stuff going on. So he's been searching for a long time and the last place that he wanted to look was Ephesus, but he knows that he has to look there. So now he's there, but he got captured and discovered as a Syracusian and he doesn't have the thousand marks to pay, but the Duke of Ephesus is like, you know what you have today to run around and try to find the thousand marks so that you can pay your bail, otherwise you're gonna die at sunset. So Aegean is not super hopeful that he's gonna find the money, but he, he goes looking for it anyway. So act one, scene two, we get to meet Antiphilus of Syracuse. So if you remember the twins, each set of twins supposedly was so identical that the only way you could tell them apart was their names. However, growing up, since they were separated, they decided to take the other twins' names. So we have Antiphilus of Syracuse, and later on we're going to meet his brother, Antiphilus of Ephesius. Also, like the, the servant twins are Dromeo of Syracuse and Dromeo of Ephesius. So we have two Antiphiluses and we have two Dromeos at this point. That, that will become characters in this play. We haven't met everybody yet, but in Act 1, Scene 2, we meet Antiphilus of Syracuse and Dromeo of Syracuse, who also happen to be in Ephesius because they are also looking for the long-lost brothers. And we start off the scene, Antiphilus is talking to a merchant, trying to sell some stuff, and the merchant's like, yeah, you don't let them know that you're from Syracuse here, because otherwise you'll be killed. And Antiphilus is like, yeah, I know. And he sends Dromeo with a thousand marks to go hide it somewhere secure in their inn. So Antiphilus of Syracuse gives Dromeo of Syracuse a thousand marks to go stash it away somewhere safe. And then Antiphilus asks the merchant if he wants to have dinner, and the merchant's like, well, I have something to do, but I'll, I'll meet you at five. But then Dromeo, er, the merchant leaves. Dromeo of Ephesius enters the scene. He is looking for Antiphilus of Ephesius because he's late for dinner. But of course, since all of these twins are so identical, Dromeo of Ephesius goes to Antiphilus of Syracuse and is like, you're late for dinner and your wife is really pissed off. You have to come to dinner. And Antiphilus is like, so you stashed my gold already? And Dromeo's like, I don't know what you're talking about, but dinner is burned. You have to go. And Antiphilus is like, but I gave you this money. What did you do with my money? And Dromeo's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know what money, but your dinner is burning. And Antiphilus is like, I don't even have a wife. Where am I? I? I can't go home to dinner. I don't have a home here and I'm not married and I like I just want to know what you did with my gold. And Dromeo is like, I don't know what you're talking about with the gold because obviously it's the wrong Antiphilus that he's talking to and the wrong Dromeo, so mistaken identity stuff. Until finally Antiphilus gets so frustrated with this Dromeo not knowing what he's talking about that he beats him like you do. And that Dromeo goes running away and that's basically the end of Act 1. So we've started in with the mistaken identity and potentially missing props stuff because now Antiphilus is freaked out. He doesn't know what happened to his thousand marks, which he will need if he gets caught being from Syracuse here in Ephesus. So Act 2, Scene 1, we start out with the wife. Her name is Adriana. She is married to Antiphilus of Ephesius, and she has a sister named Luciana, and they're talking and sort of talking about the nature of relationships between men and women because Adriana is all upset that Antiphilus hasn't come home for dinner yet. Luciana is unmarried and apparently doesn't have the proper temperament to be married, so they talk a little bit about 
relationships and all that sort of thing. And then Dromeo of Ephesus comes in and Adriana's like, where's my husband? And Dromeo says, well, I found him, but he's crazy because he was asking me for money that he never gave me and he said that he's not married to you and has no idea who you are. And he's like, you know, I got so upset by the whole thing and then he started beating me and, and Adriana's like, well, I'm gonna beat you if you don't go back and find him and physically bring him back here. And Dromeo's like, well, I'm, I'm in a no-win situation here. So he runs away, presumably to look for Antiphilus again, also probably to get away from Adriana potentially beating him. And as soon as he's gone, Adriana starts to freak out a little bit about the fact that her husband hasn't come home to dinner and is now disavowing her. And she says, his company must do his minion's grace, whilst I at home starve for a merry look. Hath homely age the alluring beauty took from my poor cheek? Then he hath wasted it. Are, are my discourses dull, barren, my wit? If voluble and sharp discourse be marred, unkindness blunts it more than marble hard. Do their gay vestments his affections bait? That's not my fault. He's master of my state. What ruins are in me that can be found by him not ruined? Then is he the ground of my defeatures? My decayed fair, a sunny look of his would soon repair. But to unruly dear, he breaks the pail and feeds from home. Poor I am but his stale. So she's doing that thing that wives do when their husbands don't come home, or at least wives in very heteronormative relationships in old plays and films and that sort of thing do, where her husband hasn't come home for dinner, so now she thinks that his eye has started to wander and he's no longer interested in her. So she's being very self-deprecating in this speech. She's saying, am I not pretty enough? Am I not smart enough? You know, this is all his fault. He has kept me at home by myself and not been very nice to me. So if I'm withering away, it's because he hasn't been paying me attention and that sort of a thing. She, she gets very down on herself because her husband hasn't come home for dinner and she's, she's worried about what that means for their relationship. And Luciana's like, don't, don't do that. But Adriana's not quite done doing that and we'll get to hear a little bit more of her doing that in tomorrow's monologue. So I will see you then for that. Mwah.